scrappers. Well, today I'm going to show you how I turn a big pile of icy chips like this into gold. And maybe if we're a little lucky, we'll get some silver out of them as a bonus too. Okay? So, I have a lot of videos on YouTube about how I process IC chips, but they're all kind of uh, specialized videos. Each step in the process going into a lot of detail. So spread out over five or six videos that are 45 minutes long or so. So to what I'm going to try to do today is cram every step in the process into one video. So everybody can see all in one sitting exactly how I go from this to this. Okay? Now, to be clear about a couple of things. First off, these are plastic IC chips. All right, run-of-the-mill plastic IC chips. I got some flat packs here. Got some dual inlines. There's some uh, leadless chip carrier. But they're all plastic ICs of some sort. I have other videos online dealing with uh, ceramic ICs. There's no ceramics in here. And I have other videos for dealing with the ball grid array or BGA ICs. Uh, so there's no BGAs in here. Um, so those are in separate videos. So these are just the plastic chips. To be clear about another thing, I have gone through all these chips and looked at them. And none of them have any real resale value to them, okay? Um, say this chip was good and if there was a demand for it, you could sell it. You know, even if you only sell it for a buck, you'll probably get more money for it that way than you would from the gold that's going to come out of it. So always check through, look through your chips. Uh, separate out the ones that might be good for resale. I also separate out the ones that are going to be good for my retro computing projects. So I don't have to buy those chips, you know. So always look through your chips because you may be, you know rendering these down for you know a few cents worth of gold when they're worth a buck or two so check them out all right now that being said uh, we've got a lot of steps to get from here to here so I want to get this uh, video started we're gonna gloss over a few things we're gonna move pretty quick and hopefully cram everything into one video that's not too intolerably long if it is too long if I think it's too long I'll split it into two videos part one and part two hopefully we can cram it all in one all right Let's get moving. Now the first step for me, and not everybody does this, in fact I may be the only one who does it for all I know. The first step in getting the gold out of these chips for me is to soak these in AP solution, acid peroxide solution, and chew off all these metal legs. These metal legs, they're just steel, copper, they're tinned. Um, it's just junk metal that's going to get in the way of rendering the gold out of these. So I'm going to get rid of as much of it as I can up front. And I'm going to do that by soaking them in AP solution. Now down here, I've got a five gallon bucket that's mostly full of AP solution. And I've been soaking IC chips in there for, oh, probably close to two years now. How long is it going to keep dissolving the legs off? I don't know. It just keeps working. You know, when the level gets a little low due to evaporation, I just uh, add some more uh, muriatic acid to it. So, it keeps working. Let me glove up, and we'll put some, uh, we'll put some chips in here. I'll show you how I do it, and uh, we'll get them dissolving. And so I've got a colander down here that I put the chips in, just to sort of keep them contained, so they don't wind up in the bottom of the bucket where I can't get at them. So I'm going to fill this colander up with some chips. Just a good random mix of chips. Yeah, I'm not going to fill it. Put about that many in at a time. I don't want to overload the overload the uh, the bucket here. I've got strings attached to the colander, which at the moment are all tangled inconveniently, so I can pull it in and out of the bucket. There we go. Without having to get my hands down into that nasty liquid. I also have a fish tank bubbler. And I'm going to put that in here, and that's going to bubble away in there and keep the liquid circulating so it doesn't get stagnant. And that will help. That will help a lot. Some of these IC chips want to float, get them to sink. There we go. Perfect. We're going, we're bubbling, the chips are in. I'm going to put the lid on. 
fish tank bubbler down here on top of the lid. Put the lid on loosely and just set it back out of the way. And I'm going to leave that. Leave that there for a couple weeks. No rush. I'm not in any hurry. I'll let the chemistry do the work for me. You know, some people will grind the legs off with a grinding wheel or whatever. I'm too lazy for that. I'll let the chemistry do its thing. Besides, I'm going to be out of town for a couple of weeks. When I come back, those legs will all be dissolved off, and I'll be ready to move on to the next step. So, we're just going to let that sit, and through the magic of YouTube, you'll see the next step right away. It won't be a couple of weeks for you. It's been a few weeks. Stuff's been soaking away in here. Well, I was going to say the bubbler's been going, but it looks like the bubbler has stopped bubbling at some point. Huh, the line is probably clogged. But these have been in here long enough that uh, I'm sure they are probably done. Pull it out a little bit. And let's see what we've got here. Those look pretty thoroughly delegged to me. Put a sieve under it here. And uh, a bit of a wash with tap water. Yeah, I don't see any legs. Yeah, these flat pat legs are all gone right up into the package away. A lot of flat packs in this load. Some other stuff here. Not sure. Oh, that's a that's a multi-seven segment display. Had all its legs chewed off. That's good. Yeah. Ooh. Not sure what that is, but there's gold there. You see that? How's oh, that showing up? Not sure what that is. It's like gold foil from something. Let's set that aside. Uh, yeah, it's all looking pretty darn good. So what I'm going to do is I am going to um, add these to my bucket of ICs that are ready to be incinerated. That's the next step for these, incineration. And I'll show you that when I'm set up to do some incineration. But at least now we've gotten rid of all the, uh, the junk metal on the legs. And uh, there's a lot less metal here to process. Okay, here we go, the next step in the process. These chips have had their legs chewed off in the AP solution for a few weeks. There's also some other stuff in here besides IC chips. There's some LEDs. Yeah, that's pretty much it, LEDs and IC chips. So what I have here is one of the uh, crucibles from my metal melting foundry furnace. And a piece of steel brake line, which has seen better days. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the crucible up with IC chips and I'm going to incinerate them in my foundry furnace. But first, I'm going to put this piece of steel brake line in here down to the bottom of the crucible. Then I'm going to fill the crucible up with chips. And the reason I'm doing this is to ensure I get oxygen from the air down to the bottom of the crucible. I want to make sure that these chips get fully incinerated. They don't just get turned into black carbon, which will happen if uh, they're put in the furnace without adequate oxygen to them. They'll basically turn into something resembling charcoal. That is not a good situation. You want to burn off as much of the carbon in these chips as you can. So if I put them in the foundry without adequate airflow through here, a process called pyrolization will take place, where all of the uh, all of the volatile chemicals in here will be boiled off by the heat, but the carbon will get left behind. So we don't want pyrolysis. We want uh, oxidation. We want total combustion, burning away of everything. So to do that. 
number one, I make sure I've got a fairly oxidizing fire in the foundry furnace. And number two, I pump extra air from my air compressor down to the bottom of the crucible uh, while the uh, while it's firing in the in the furnace, and that helps burn from the bottom up all the stuff in the crucible, while the oxidizing atmosphere in the furnace burns from the top down. And it does a pretty good job of completely combusting all the stuff in the chips, and they wind up with just a lot of white ash left behind not a lot of black carbon. You don't want a lot of carbon because carbon will hold on to gold. It's very porous. And when you start trying to extract the gold from the ashes you got left over here, a lot of it will wind up inside the porous carbon and you'll never get it all out. It's very annoying. So I always try to ash my ship chips completely. Now I'm not saying this is the best way to ash IC chips. Lots of people do it different ways. Uh, what I am saying is this is one of the most complete ways to ash them and it's about the easiest because I can start up the furnace and walk away. I don't have to do anything. I see people sitting there, you know, they got their little setup going and they just feed a chip in. I have to wait for it to burn off. Feed another chip in. Wait for it to burn off. Feed another chip in. Now, I'm going to do this couple of pounds of chips all at once and I can just walk away. So, like I say, maybe not the best way, but certainly the easiest. Okay, let me get this in the foundry, and I'll show you what that looks like before I fire it up. Alright, so here's the setup. Got my foundry furnace here. I got the crucible with the chips in it inside the furnace. I got the burner for the furnace here, which goes off to a propane tank behind me. Uh, down here, I've got a little air regulator with a line that goes back to my air compressor, which is also behind me, out of sight. And what I'm going to do is, after I light the foundry, I'm going to put the lid on it. I'm going to put this uh, chimney on it, which uh, allows for reburning of the gases coming out, so it reduces the smoke tremendously, because in the initial period, when this thing's first starting up, it can be very smoky. But with this on it, it pulls uh, fresh air in, mixes it with the smoke, and it reburns reduces the smoke nicely so so I'll put after I get it lit I'll put the lid on I'll put the chimney on I'll start the airflow just to trickle I don't want a lot of airflow at least not in the beginning because it'll actually cool the contents of the crucible uh, rather than allow it to heat up once things get really really hot everything in there is like orange hot I'll, I'll crank up the airflow and that will help burn the chips from the bottom then I'll turn down the uh, I'll turn down the heat coming from the burner because it won't be needed anymore that much. But I just want to maintain a little bit of temperature in there and maintain the oxidizing flame to burn the chips from the top. And in the end we'll have a crucible full of well oxidized chips with all of the uh, carbon burned away. Okay, so let me get it fired up. hold the heat in and whoa that's hot already put the chimney on to reburn the, the smoke gases once they start coming out it's going to take a little while to heat up and uh, once it gets good and hot I'll turn on the airflow down there I just need a trickle somebody in this comments is always going to ask what pressure are you using on the air basically I have no idea because the, the uh, gauge on the uh, regulator is bad but I just need a trickle of airflow I don't need a lot of airflow just a little bit so pressure is really irrelevant it's more flow and you just need a little bit it's only been burning for a couple minutes but it's getting really hot in there if I look inside I can see oh bright orange glow down there it's getting really hot there's almost no smoke just a tiny little wisp coming out now and then 
what's happening is right now we got a lot of pyrolysis going on down in here in the in this uh, crucible. A lot of volatile organic compounds are being cooked out as the stuff in that crucible gets hot. And that stuff is coming up into the chimney up here, mixing with fresh air from those vents in the bottom and burning off. And I don't want to get the camera too close to look in it because it's really, really hot. But there's like a tornado of fire inside that chimney. And that's the what would be smoke coming out otherwise burning off in there. So just doing my part for the environment. Reducing electronic waste without producing a whole lot of air pollution. That's my goal. That and get the gold. Okay, it's been a few more minutes. It's basically about done with the pyrolysis. There's really no more flames in there. Everything is orange hot, and there's really no flames, no smoke, no nothing. So what that tells me is the pyrolysis is done, all of the volatile stuff has been cooked out of the chips. So all that's going to be left behind now is metal, ash, and carbon. So now the goal is to just burn off the rest of the carbon. So for that, I'm just going to turn the heat down. Here, you could you could probably hear the uh, burner chopping because it's 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 on so low it's barely on because I don't need that much heat anymore and I'm going to turn the amount of air going in up so that the air is going to burn the carbon off from the bottom of the uh, crucible up. I don't need the reburner chimney anymore because there's really no more smoke coming out and no flames. And I'll take the camera off and give you a, a look at what's going on inside the uh, furnace. Okay, we've reached the point where I don't need the burner on at all anymore. I've turned it off. And I don't know how well that's showing up because it's hard to see on the viewfinder. But the inside of the crucible is glowing hotter than the outside of the crucible and that's because the carbon in there is being burned off by the air that's going in. Now it's a kind of a delicate balance you don't want to put so much air in there that you get such a roaring fire that uh, you melt down all the metal but you do want to burn off all the carbon so like I say it's a little bit of a delicate balance a little bit of trial and error to figure out how much air to put in and uh, I'm just gonna let it go I'm just going to leave it go now and until it all goes dark and starts cooling down. The air will, will burn off the, the remaining carbon and then once it's all done and the flame goes out the airflow will help cool things off. So I'm just going to let it go and it'll probably be tomorrow before it's cool enough to touch the crucible and get it out. I'll let the air go for a few more hours anyway just until everything goes dark and black and there's uh, no more combustion. All right, it's been a little while later. Things have cooled down inside the furnace for the most part, except for inside the crucible. You can see, I hope you can see anyway, how much of a glow is coming from down inside the crucible where the carb is burning off. It's doing exactly what I want it to do. It's ashing up those chips nicely, getting rid of the carbon. Just going to let it go until it's dark and cold. All right, the next step, got our nice... Uh, Nicely ashed chips here out of the foundry. They've cooled off. It's been a couple days actually. It's been raining cats and dogs, so this has just been sitting around for a couple days. Now the next step is we're going to grind up all these nicely ashed chips in the blender and make a fine powder out of them and sift them through this uh, sieve. Anything that won't go through the sieve goes back in the blender. So let me get a batch in here. Nice, nicely ashed, nice and white. Even if I dig down a ways, they're still nice and white. All the way to the bottom. Just the way I want it. Not a lot of carbon here. Got a mask on because this is going to make a lot of really nasty dust. 
you don't want to breathe this dust. I've also got a little piece of cardboard down here to collect any dust or bits and pieces that I spill on the on the tabletop because there could be gold in them. I want to collect them all. And here we go. So pretty much just like that. Ooh, there's the dust. Nasty. There's going to be some metal in this that's not going to grind up. But that's okay. In the end, everything that won't go through the mesh, and it's going to be mostly metal, I'll treat separately. And I'll show you that when we get to it. But everything that doesn't go through the mesh, He's going right back in the blender for now. i put some more chips in. Put this stuff back in. And do it again. My $5 yard sale blender has been doing this for about uh, three, four years now. It is on its third set of new blades, but uh, everything else just keeps plugging away. Blades are cheap. Okay, we're just going to keep this up until I get through the entire crucible. I will make you watch the whole process, so this video will be long and tedious. But we're going to wind up with is a nice fine gray powder. And I'll be back when I'm done. All the chips have been through the blender. We've got a nice bit of gray powder here, fine gray powder. Got some stuff left in the sieve that's been through the blender probably half a dozen times, and it's really not getting any smaller. There's a lot of metal here. This is uh, metal from the inside of the chips. There's heat sinks. There's wire frameworks, there's bits of copper, there's bits of... Some of this stuff may be silver. I wouldn't be surprised if some of this stuff is silver. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this oversized stuff and just set it aside. I'm going to treat it a little differently than uh, this fine powder. For instance, this stuff doesn't need a gravity separation, but this does. We need to get rid of the bulk of this fine and gray ashy stuff and just leave behind the metal that's in here and the IC uh, dye debris. So for that we're going to do a gravity separation. That's the next step. I'll show you that. Alright, the next step in the process is to do a gravity separation. It's basically going to let the water do the work of separating the light ashy stuff out of here and leave behind all of the metal that made it through that sieve, including the gold bond wires and any other heavy stuff in here. There'll be uh, chunks of the um, IC dyes in here too. But I want to get rid of as much of this uh, lightweight ashy stuff as I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this all thoroughly wet. Get the light stuff suspended in the water column. Give it a couple of seconds to settle some. And then pour off the liquid. And I'm pouring into a catch basin. I want to catch anything that makes it out of the bucket. That I want, might want to save. Because sometimes a little bit of the metal will come out of the bucket. Now after only one treatment, we've already reduced the volume by quite a bit. We're going to do this a few more times. 
and give it a few seconds to settle. Pour it off. Slowly and gently. Stop as soon as you start seeing the bigger chunks get up towards the edge of the bucket. Okay. Again. We're going to keep doing this until the water is coming off pretty clear. Once the water's clear, you know we've got most of the ashy stuff out of the way. That ashy stuff has no value. There's no gold in it. Water's starting to get pretty clear. One or two more times and I'd say we're done. Later in the process, I'm going to need to filter... filter the liquid that's going to come off this stuff after I treat it with aqua regia. And getting rid of all this small, powdery, ashy stuff is going to help there because it's not going to plug the filter so bad. What's getting left behind is pretty big. Yeah. Now we're getting there. That's pretty good, but I think I'll do it one more time. Gotten rid of the bulk of the ashy stuff. Now we're getting rid of the small bits of silica IC dye material that are wanting to suspend themselves in the water column for a few seconds. Okay, that's pretty good. I think that's as far as I'm going to go with that. Now, let me see about this see what we might have lost into here. And there's some material here, but most of it's probably the light ashy stuff. Let me give it a wash. Give it a couple seconds to settle. Pour it off. Yeah, that got rid of most of it. The gold is 19 times heavier than water. Even small pieces of gold are going to settle pretty quickly out of the water column. It's the other stuff that's going to stay suspended in the water column more than a couple seconds. And it's the other stuff that we want to get rid of. Yeah, get rid of about 90% of what was in this tub here. One more time. Okay, and I'm going to put what's in here in here. Pour this off into here just in case I get sloppy. I want to lose a lot of it. Okay, and there we go. We've greatly reduced the volume and gotten rid of a lot of the light ashy stuff. Now we can start treating it with acid. Alright, I got our uh, freshly gravity separated uh, material here. I see chip remains. And uh, over here is the metallic stuff that wouldn't go through the sieve after going through the blender I don't know how many times. 
So we got our two parts here. Now I did a fairly small batch just for demonstration purposes. It was only one crucible of IC chips. Sometimes I'll do two, three, four crucibles in a batch and I'll wind up with a lot of this stuff. And just to reduce the volume of it further, get rid of more of the stuff in here that's not gold. I mean, there's a lot of IC chip debris. It's like sand, basically. It's, it's silica sand IC chip debris uh, from the silicon dyes. And uh, what I'll do to, to further concentrate this stuff when I have a large batch of it is I will run it through my sluice box. My little mini sluice box and I have a video of that and I'll put a video link to the video up here in the corner and you can check that out but uh, just for purposes of brevity in this video I'm not going to set up the sluice box and go through all that again in fact since this was a fairly small batch it's still a little bit more than I would like to run in a beaker I think I'll just put this stuff in a beaker and start treating it with acids at this point and uh, see what we can get out of it how much gold same with this this is going to go in a different beaker beaker all its own. Um, going to treat them both in nitric acid and dissolve the metal out of them, the, the, the junk base metal. Uh, dissolve that out of them. And then uh, whatever's left behind is going to be gold and whatever silica debris is left in there. Then once uh, I rinse the uh, base metal salts out of the beakers, then I can put aqua regia in it and dissolve the gold. So I think that's the route we're going to take. I'm just going to get my beakers out and we'll start dissolving this stuff.